Welcome back to Black TV. It's time for Trader's Take. With Bitcoin hovering around $8,000, it's time to check in with Black TV technical analyst Joe Saz and crypto analyst Tone Vase. We're both, actually, fun fact here, both at the Financial Summit in Bali to see where things stand and where they are headed. So, guys, first of all, how are you and how's Bali? Uh, I will say that I am having a great time. It's fantastic out here. And uh, honestly, I, I think... Uh, this is the real vacation I needed, Aran. Remember how long I've been talking to you about that? Yeah, and even on your non-vacation, you guys are still working. I think it's uh, it's it's an insanity here. But but you know, things with Bitcoin have been going up and down lately. We're all confused, and we're turning to you guys. You know what you're talking about. Tell us what's going on. All right. Well, let's uh, let's jump straight into a tone. You want to start with the 15 minute, or you want to jump to a daily? Uh, I like the daily, but if you want to talk about the 15 minute first, go for it. But that looks like the. Um, What's the time frame on this? That's the is daily. This, is this there updated? Is. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, let me refresh that. this page real quick because uh, the internet, um, it, I just switched internets. So uh, we're just experiencing a technical difficulty, but here we go. Uh, the daily should have been on a nine buy and we should have uh, reacted to that. All right, uh, we're loading back in here. Um, you know, so you can't get it all in Bali, guys. You can't have a nice view and, inter and internet too. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. So a quick look at the 15 minute. Obviously, we're lacking some information here, but uh, we have a little bit of a move to the upside. We had a nasty wick. Uh, this Was this earlier? This is uh, 1021. Uh, so man, yeah, everything's a little bit delayed here. Let's go back to the chart. Yep. Oh, of course, uh, still loading. Um, based on the information we have, uh, I'm going to let these load. Uh, Bitcoin, it, it took a little, it's been really choppy lately. Um, we're starting to get some action here on the on the reload. So we'll jump to screen share in a sec. But um, like we've been monitoring the price. Uh, the price is pretty much, we, we hit a sequential nine buy. Um, we didn't really bounce from it. We started to create a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern. And I'm trying to get us there. Um, so let's just see what happens. And again, I apologize, we can't have it all. We can have our coconut water, <laughs> but we can't have our perfect internet connection, unfortunately. Um, what can but, I tell you? Uh, yeah, I mean- But so um, what, is, what is it that we're seeing in general? Because we've been below eight uh, for a brief period, we're now back over eight. People are, people are, are, are you know, frustrated. Um, it's safe my, to say- My, yes, my view going. is that, my view is that this consolidation around 8,000 uh, while has a chance to potentially be healthy in the future, uh, it would have to frustrate people a lot more. Um, I am still uh, intermediate term bearish here. Uh, the, this move off of 7,700 uh, to as high as 8,500 has not yet convinced me that Bitcoin is ready to tackle all time highs. And at the moment, I am still anticipating um, a lower swing low in the low $7,000 area. Now, it doesn't actually have to stop there. Um, I'm still a little bit bearish here. I'm being a little bit cautious. And this consolidation could turn into a nice buying opportunity, but it would have to consolidate into next year. And I find that to be a little bit unlikely. So at the moment, I'm I need the price to prove to me that it's going up. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that this consolidation will eventually break the floor and take us to 7,000 and lower. Do you know yeah, about, and, and, oh, you're saying into the new year, do you think 7K um, is something that would happen by 2020? I believe that the low in the market, it will most likely be made this year. Now, this year is slowly starting to come to an end. We only have uh, about, uh, what, 70 days to go. I've always expected the, the low in the market, uh, the overall low, which happened to be in December of last year, and the current swing low, because we're already down a good uh, 50%, uh, almost, almost 50%, uh, about 45% from the $14,000 top back in June. So I expected both of these lows to happen this year. It's possible that it will happen next year, uh, but I think once we get out of this year, uh, Bitcoin should be okay. But getting, out, but getting out of this year could be more stressful than people would like to believe. Yeah, Absolutely. so we got a little, we got a little bit of screen share that we can do now to, to show a chart. This is our, our one working uh, mechanism here. 
we got, um, you know, some, so this is the head and shoulders that I'm starting to see form. We have a shoulder here, and obviously I can't really zoom in much further for dramatic effect. I can't drag, oh, I can drag the scale a little bit more. So let's do that um, and click on this little sign here. So I'm starting to see a little bit of a head and shoulders um, on a, I think this was, Tone, if you recall, was this the sequential nine buy right here? Um, honestly, I mean, with the event, with the financial summit here in Bali, the last three to four days and by prior days, of debating with Craig Wright and all of the uh, mis misunderstanding of social media of pictures during uh, networking drinks. Uh, you happen to walk past the wrong person and everyone paparazzi start taking pictures and all of a sudden everyone blows a picture out of proportion. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't really had too much time of uh, analyzing the charts. I've been taking a break from my YouTube channel, from my even from my Twitter. Uh, so I don't remember where that nine was. But uh, yeah, the market has been falling and anytime the market falls, it needs to rebound a little bit. Well, Tone, yeah, perfect, perfect that... segue. Wait, while, you, while we're talking about that. So you're saying, Tone, that you and Craig Wright are not buddies? No, absolutely not. Uh, there was a picture from a few years ago where I was coming to uh, London and a couple of guys in London decided to put together a dinner for me and invited a lot of the Bitcoiners. And just for fun, uh, the organizer invited Craig Wright uh, j just for fun. Uh, we all were 110 percent sure he was going to say no, but he said yes. <laughs> and he came to the dinner that was hosted for me. And it was a small dinner, about 15 people. And of course, it would be fun if I sit next to him during the dinner. And that was the first time I ever met him. So there were pictures of me sitting next to him at that dinner. Uh, I did interview him uh, with the intention of making the forks of the bitcoin cash side more dysfunctional than it was i had my own personal motivation for that so i had no reason to troll craig wright during that interview because my goal was to destabilize uh the bcash a hard fork to save people from making bad mistakes the sooner those scam coins die uh the better off the world will be and uh and this is the third time i'm ever in craig wright's vicinity and uh one of my friends uh Craig Cobb, who's also a trader, also an Australian. Uh, that's uh, Craig Wright has, you know, ties to Australia, as you know. And um, he was there and he thought it would be funny to just grab me and pull me in. And of course, all the Bcash guys start taking pictures. And it's a habit that they do. They try to pose themselves with respectable, prominent people uh, just so that they look more respectable. And it's, it's a bad habit. And of course, the internet blows it out of proportion. And then final, uh, you know, rumory uh, question, because I have to, the internet is saying that Craig's right suit was a full on tuxedo with a tail. Did it have it or did it not? <laughs> <laughs> was there a tail uh, on yeah, that tuxedo uh, tone? No, there, there's definitely a tail there. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's got to... a couple of horns too, yeah. Okay, well, we, you know, it was very pertinent and we had to know. But moving on with Bitcoin and moving back to the charts, what's going on? What else? What more can you tell us? Or we can move on if you guys would like. Well, uh, I was like, just to hit the price, I personally think that like there might be a random wick that jumps us up to like 8,500, maybe 86, but the uh, 200 day moving average is still accelerating pretty quickly and the 50 MA is coming down pretty hard. So I still, we're still looking at the death cross in the near future. Um, I, I believe at this point it's probably less than a few weeks. Um, and obviously my internet isn't perfect. So having a little bit of uh, drama there, but I'd love to show it. Um, but uh, let's see if we can get it back up now. Second, second tab. This imminent death cross, and, man, let me tell you, it's throwing everybody off. You hear death cross and it's just, it, it well, sounds the, over from there. How many weeks do you think we have? Uh, I think we have like maybe three, three to four weeks before we hit it. I, I, I think it's been weeks as of uh, a, like a week or so ago. So maybe we're down to three weeks before we hit it. And the question to me is like, how badly is that going to affect the market? Because right now it's really only traders trading. We've kind of gone over the fact that Google Trends shows that there's really no interest or, or, or in an organic accumulation right now. Like we're at a Bitcoin event and people are talking about DCAing, but you know, we're not talking about serious market pressure against the bears that are concerned about like, you know, the price that could, you know, a price that could go lower, especially after revisiting the, the high 7,000 area and consolidating in this low 8K range. So it's definitely not comparable to the breakdown to the uh, November 14th descending triangle breakdown. I believe we've broken that 
ability to compare the two as very similar. But um, I, I think that we're, I personally think that we're headed toward like a 72, 6,800 range. And if you remember me and Sock were talking about that, and that's coming up like a week and a half from now. So, you know, I, I can't remember what his prediction was, but it'll be funny to see which, whichever one was closer, Price is Right style. Yeah, I just remember that yours was, a, your, yours was a bit higher than, uh, than Sox, if I'm not mistaken. But then throwing that question over to you, Tone, what are you th- seeing with this death cross? When do you see it happening? And how do you see that affecting the market? Uh, I mean, we're also at this uh, financial summit with Willie Wu, uh, one of our top uh, fundamental analysts in the space uh, in crypto. And he is pretty bullish. He's pretty convinced that there are underlying fundamentals and accumulation from high net worth individuals in the financial sector. And his opinion really needs to be respected. Uh, he did a great job timing the bottom at 3000. And uh, uh, well, yeah, well, well, he's, right well, he's actually behind the glass there behind us. And uh, there he is, he's waving. And uh, <laughs> uh, I do respect his opinion, but I'm more of a technical analyst than a chartist. And I have to go what uh, worked for me for the last 15 years. And the charts to me still look a little bit scary. I'm happy to become a bull again if we can break that $11,000, $12,000 area. But until it does, I'm going to continue to look for lower prices, especially with the depth cross looming. And uh, once people get comfortable with this $8,000 range, uh, I believe there's going to be one more step down and uh, seven or 6000 and then from a reversal from there. Uh, trading is never easy. And uh, you have to uh, do the best you can with the tools uh, that you trust. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to agree with that. And uh, just uh, on that note, we're actually headed to uh, what an amazing event tone on top of this amazing event that tone organized. We're uh, on our way to a a beautiful, like, how do you want to explain this? uh, We have a ship for everyone at this event. event It's not just a ship. This thing is a freaking, the ship of all ships. (laughs) This event is not big. It was only open to uh, approximately 30 uh, traders and people from a finance space and a hedge fund space, uh, but they could bring their significant others. Uh, So we have in total uh, close to 40 people here. Uh, So we decided to do something nice and oh, for the sunset and uh, rent rent a big boat and we got to head over there now. Well, fantastic. And we do not want to keep you away from that. Thank you guys for joining us to break a, down a bit of Bitcoin um, uh, for every for all the folks at home watching. Thank you very much, Tone Vase and Joe Saz. We hope you seriously enjoy yourself over there um, in Bali and beautiful Bali. And uh, I'm sorry for the shitty internet connection, but for all you folks at home watching at blocktv.com, keep on watching from a cryptocurrency, blockchain related news. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.